happy Thursday, fabulous Nars here with your daily fix. Days Gone director speaks about how it outsold Ghost of Tsushima but was still considered a failure. Konami celebrates Castlevania's 35th anniversary by auctioning off NFTs. And His Holiness the Pope just watched a circus perform music from Undertale right in the Vatican. Definitely a weird story to kick off 2022, but it does get weirder, so buckle up. <laughs> A tweet posted by Ghost of Tsushima developer Sucker Punch on Twitter celebrated the game selling over 8 million copies since its launch in July 2020. The accomplishment comes months after the release of the game's director cut. Well, that's great news for the team at Sucker Punch and Sony. The milestone sparked Days Gone director Jeff Ross to speak about his drastically different experience working on PlayStation exclusives. In a quote tweet, Ross claims Days Gone has actually outsold Tsushima, but was made to feel like a disappointment by management at Bend Studio. At the time Ross left Sony, Days Gone had sold over 8 million copies and sold more than a million copies on Steam. The wider Sony organization never outwardly stated that it believed Days Gone was a quote unquote disappointment, and it was revealed later that year that Bend is working on a new IP after reports suggested that a pitch for a sequel for the game had been rejected. The reluctance to approve a sequel to Days Gone could be due to mixed reviews of the game at launch despite it selling well across PlayStation consoles and Steam. The game was riddled with bugs and received less than satisfactory reviews, but critics still largely agreed the game was fun. However, in regards to a response on Twitter that said Sony favors high scores, Ross's response acknowledged that, but also articulated the grief the team received was more about sales and not scores. Public discourse in response to Ross's complaint was that maybe there was a better management in place. To which the director simply replied, nope. So the question remains, what is considered a success for a game if not high sales? Especially when we talk about over 8 million copies sold over 1.5 years on PlayStation and 2 million on PC. And just to clarify again, Days Gone sold over 10 million copies and Ghost of Tsushima over 8 million. You guys let me know in the comments, is Ross take justified? Moving on, Konami is celebrating Castlevania's 35th anniversary by auctioning NFTs featuring 14 unique artworks from the Castlevania series. Though the actual anniversary is a few months off as the milestone date is in September, the complete collection will be available for worldwide auction on OpenSea starting from January 12th. Konami's official website shows some of the digital items for sale consisting of game scenes, background music, and newly drawn visuals from the series Rich History, which spans back to 1986, when the first console title on the NES was released. According to Konami, the Castlevania collection is just the beginning of a new initiative to share content beloved by players all over the world, with the company planning to explore more ways to add to the collection following its initial release. With everybody and their mama getting into NFTs and crypto and an equal number of players promising to never buy one, you gotta start asking yourself, is this going to be a trend that sticks or is it going to be something that flops? That's the gamble, right? And finally, this news, I didn't believe myself until I saw the video, but yes, the Pope just watched the circus perform the music from the indie game Undertale. And yeah, let that sink in. The report by the gamer shows the Pope watching a group of circus performers put on a display to the sound of Undertale's Megalovania. <laughs> Now, for context, each week Pope Francis holds a general audience which groups of pilgrims attend. The Pope uses these events to impact benedictions and blessings to those present by entertaining his guests with performances, and in this case, it was the Blessing of San's theme song, which is a really good blessing. I don't know. That's a pretty awesome blessing. Now, truth be told, this whole scene is weird, with performers huddled together in a corner, coming out of the group to juggle objects, a unicyclist making a short trip, and then an upside down feet and some batons. There wasn't really much to hold audiences' attention. What's worse is the audience's lifeless expression, the Pope's stern looks, and the guard's jarring position, not to mention the massive room with, I think, that being Jesus burning in the background? I don't know. It's freaking me out. Not quite 
all these things belong together. Of course, you might be wondering how this happened at all. Why Undertale? Well, you have to thank game theorist Matt Pat for that as a YouTuber met his holiness back in 2016 when creators from all over the world were invited to the Vatican. Matt Pat gifted him a copy of the game as it's common to give the Pope a gift, and I guess Pope Francis likes the game. Or at least the music. It honestly makes sense why MatPat gave the Pope Undertale as the game is critically acclaimed for its reminder that video games don't have to be all about violence and shooting. Who am I kidding? It's all about explosions! BOOM! So yeah, what kind of circus act and video game theme do you think the Pope should jam to next? Comment away, let me know. And that was your Games Fix for today, January 6th. Download the IGN app on all your devices, follow the Daily Fix on Snapchat. For all things, everything else, just head on over to IGN.com. I'm Nars, and remember to always stay fabulous.